In this video, I'm going to show you how to obtain descriptive statistics by using GraphPad Prism. Obtaining descriptive statistics using GraphPad Prism is relatively straightforward. By just a few simple clicks, you can get a wealth of information back from your data to give you a snapshot of the data as a whole. Examples of descriptive statistics that can be performed include the mean, the standard deviation, the standard error of the mean, and this can extend to the quartiles, so the 25th and the 75th percentiles, as well as the median value. As well as this, there's also the coefficient of variation, so this is a figure to give you an idea of the variation of your data. There's also more advanced descriptives, including the geometric mean, the harmonic mean and the quadratic mean. So these are just different types of means as opposed to the conventional arithmetic mean. And there's also data that will give you an indication of the distribution of your data, for example, the skewness and ketosis. So let's dive into GraphPad Prism where we'll perform and go through some descriptive statistics. So within Prism, what I'm going to do is just select a column type of table and I'm going to enter some sample data which is already inside PRISM itself so you can follow along this video if you so wish. I'm going to select the entering replicate data so this is where data is stacked onto each other and I'm going to click the create button. I'm just going to minimize this note. So we have three columns or three groups of data in this table. We've got untreated, placebo, and treated and these are replicate values stacked into columns. So each column represents different readings from that same group. So to obtain descriptive statistics within PRISM, you want to go to the Analyze button, click this, and then under Column Analyses, you want to scroll down to see Descriptive Statistics and select this. If you have a subcolumn table or you have an XY table, you can also click the Descriptive Statistics under com Column Analyses to get the descriptive statistics. In the right hand side, you want to check each group that you want descriptive statistics for. So I'm going to check each one and then click OK. So in the parameters window, this is where you generally select the descriptive statistics you want to return. Let's go through each of these parameters in a bit more detail. So already checked is the minimum and maximum as well as the range. So this is the minimum value of, of each group the maximum value of each group as well as the range between the minimum and maximum values. As well as this there's also the mean which is obviously the arithmetic mean or the average, the standard deviation which is the amount of variation or dispersion of the data as well as the standard error of the mean which is a measure of the dispersion of sample means around the population mean. Basically this takes into account the end number so how many replicates or how many data points you have in each column. There's also quartiles, so you've got the median which is the 50th percentile or the middle number in the data set. So if you line up the data in order from smallest to largest this would be the middle value. Similarly the 25th percentile would be the first quarter of that data, so it's the value essentially indicating where the first quarter is. And the 75th percentile is the third quarter. There's also the column sum, so this is basically where GraphPad will add up all of the data points within each column and give you a overall value. Under the advanced subheader, there's also the coefficient of variation. So the coefficient of variation is a ratio of the standard deviation to the mean, and it's often presented as a percentage. So it indicates how variable the data is and gives you a percentage value. And underneath this, there's something called skewness and ketosis. So skewness measures the lack of symmetry in the data distribution. And additionally, ketosis measures whether the data are heavy tailed or not relative to a normal distribution. In other words, are there likely to be outliers in your sample? Additionally, there's also an option to select your own percentile. So as opposed to just the 25th and 75th percentile, you can change this value to get whatever percentile value you'd like to return. So for example, 90 percentile. This will return the 10% and the 90% percentiles. On the right hand side, you've got three different types of mean. 
So these are specialist types of mean values as opposed to this mean value at the top which is called the arithmetic mean. The geometric mean is a special type of average where we multiply the numbers together and then take the square root for two numbers, the cube root for three numbers, etc. of these values. And this is particularly useful when we want to compare things with very different properties. And an important point is that it applies only to positive numbers. The harmonic mean is a value obtained when the reciprocals of values in the data set are divided by the sum of its reciprocals. It's generally used when dealing with averages of units, such as speed or other rates and ratios. And finally, there's the quadratic mean, which is also called the root mean square, because it is the square root of the mean of the squares of the numbers in a set. And then underneath this, we have options for confidence intervals. So the confidence intervals is sort of like a range, and it indicates with a degree of certainty depending on your confidence level. So for example, if you select a confidence level of 95%, this indicates that there is a 95% certainty that the mean is within these two values. This can also be changed to either 90%, 99%, or even another value if you so wish. The most common is usually 95%, so I'm gonna leave this ticked. And you can return the confidence intervals for each different type of mean as well as the arithmetic mean. So you've got the geometric mean, the harmonic mean, and the quadratic mean. As well as this, you can also return the confidence intervals for the median value. Underneath, if I had a subcolumn sheet, these options will become active, and you can decide whether to perform the calculation for each subcolumn separately, or you can treat all the values in the subcolumns as one set of data. Now obviously, because I've got a column type of sheet, this is not available. Finally, there is an option to change how many significant digits you want the data to be returned. So at the minute, the data will be returned to four digits. So I'm just going to leave this as it is. And at the bottom, you can check this box if you want to save these selections for future use, so you don't have to keep on changing your parameters. But for now, I'm going to click the OK button to return the descriptive statistics. So as you'll notice, there is a new result sheet that's been created, and this is called descriptive statistics of your data sheet, and this is what it'll look like. So what I'm going to do now is just go through each of these in a bit more detail. So as the data sheet itself, the data is returned in different columns. So again, each column represents a different group. And first off, we've got the number of values. So this is the N number of each group, and we have five data points in each group. There's also the minimum, so the minimum value of this data, the maximum, as well as the range. So obviously the range is just the difference between the minimum and maximum values. There is the 25th percentile, the median, so the middle number, and the 75th percentile. All of this data here would be presented if you chose to display a box plot, for example. If you remember, we decided to select our own percentiles as well. So we did the 10 percent percentile as well as the 90 percent percentile. So these are these two values here. So underneath this, we've got the 95% confidence intervals for the median value. So in this case, GraphPad's returned an actual confidence level, which is what it's decided to work with due to our N numbers. And this is 93.75. And the lower confidence interval is three, and the upper is 4.3. So what this is saying is we're 93.75% confident the true median or population median lies between these values. A bit further down on row 18, we've got the arithmetic mean. So as you can see in these three groups, the treat group has got the highest average overall. There's also the standard deviation. So remember, this is a measure of the variation or dispersion of data. Again, the treated group has got the highest standard deviation, which means there's more variation in this data set compared to the other two. And similarly, the standard error of the mean which is the measure of dispersion of sample means around the population mean is the highest in the tree group. Now the standard error of the mean is generally always lower than the standard deviation because it takes into account the sample size. The higher the sample size, generally the more of an effect this has on the standard error of the mean. So data sets with very large end numbers will have a very low standard error. We've also got the lower and upper 95% confidence interval of the arithmetic mean, so again, with 95% certainty, the true arithmetic mean will lie between these two values. 
And as we can see, the arithmetic mean is 3.74 for the untreated group, which is about in the middle of these two values here. I'm going to scroll down a little bit more. So the next perimeter is the coefficient of variation. So this is a percentage value to indicate the variation of the each data set. So as you can see, the placebo group has the highest CV percentage. This means the placebo group has more variation relative to its mean than the other groups. We've got the geometric mean values. So again, this is just a slightly different type of mean compared to the arithmetic mean. And there's also the standard deviation for this, which is found underneath. There's also the 95% confidence intervals for the geometric mean as well. And then this is also repeated for the harmonic mean and the quadratic mean. And last up, there's also skewness and kurtosis. These two values give a good indication about the distribution of your data. Let's start with skewness first, which measures the lack of symmetry in data distribution. So ideally, a Gaussian distribution, so a bell-shaped curve, has a skewness value of zero. So this means it's completely symmetrical. Those that have values between negative 0.5 and 0.5 have a fairly symmetrical pattern. So as you can see with these values, they're just slightly outside these ranges. If the values are over negative 0.5, this means there is a negative skew, which is essentially what each of our groups has. They have a negative skew. On the opposite hand, if they're over positive 0.5, there is a positive skew. If you created a histogram, a data set with negative skewness means a longer tail to the left, and positive skewness means a longer tail to the right. Underneath there's ketosis. So again, this is just a different value, and it measures whether the data are heavily tailed or not relative to a normal distribution. So tails indicate the likelihood of outliers. A value of zero indicates that there is a normal distribution, i.e there's generally no outliers. If the values are greater than zero, so the greater the value, this means the data are heavy tailed relative to a normal distribution. So they have a few outliers. So the higher this number, in terms of the positive number, the more outliers. If the value is less than zero, so negative numbers, it indicates that the data are light tailed relative to a normal distribution. In other words, there is a lack of outliers and the data is essentially squished and protrudes in the middle which is the case for the untreated and the placebo groups. But the treated group has a roughly normal distribution about it. So as well as running skewness and ketosis descriptive statistics, it's always best to run a histogram to assess each one visually as well. And the final perimeter we have is the sum. So this is just the sum of all the data points within each group. So the good thing about GraphPad is that what you can do, instead of rerunning the whole process and you want to change a perimeter, you can go up here in the analysis tab and click change analysis perimeters and you can check and uncheck any option you so wish click OK and then the data sheet will be automatically updated for you similarly if you go to your data table where your original data set is contained if you add data values or delete data values so let's delete a few and then go back to the result sheet, you'll notice that the result sheet has updated automatically for you. So you don't have to rerun the analysis. So in this video tutorial, we've learned how to generate descriptive statistics to retrieve an overview or a snapshot of your data, such as values of the mean, the standard deviation, the standard error of the mean. And these values are very important when you want to report an overview of your data set.